What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Mind Something. If you're new here, my name is Jake and in today's video we're going to cover some more efficient settings that I found to my Nexa. And if you've watched the previous videos, um, we've had a few updates to Wild Rig, which is currently the only miner available. So if you're watching this much further into the future, perhaps we have some new uh, miners to use besides Wild Rig and perhaps we've gained some more efficiency. But for now, this is currently the most efficient settings that I could find, or at least the best tools that I could show you how to use in order to find the most efficient settings mining Nexa. So let's go ahead and pull up the farm real quick. Right now I've got about 995 mega hash on Nexa at the moment, and we're using just under 3000 watts. About 200 of this is actually mining Caspa at the moment. So let's go ahead and take a look at a few of the rigs here. The first one is Alderaan. It consists of 63070 TIs, all Founder Editions. The next one is Coruscant, which consists of 6 6600s. Then we have Naboo, which consists of 33080s and 33070s, all Founder's Editions. And we have Tatooine, which is a variety of 30 series cards, 3060 Ti, 3070s, 3080 Ti, 3080 and another 3070 Ti. And then on this farm here, I've got one other rig, Jakku, which is a 2070 Super and a Founder's Edition 3080. Now, pay no attention to the settings that you see here in the GUI uh, because we are using NV tools. And I'm going to go over that in detail here in just a moment. So, we had a discussion in Discord the other day, and shout out to Tech Profits for sharing something. One of the things that I was struggling figuring out was, if I have a rig that has a variety of cards instead of all of the same cards, how would I go about uh, using NV tools uh, to set different clocks for each GPU? So, one of the ways we could do that here was shared by Tech Profits, and what you need to do is you need to identify each GPU and then set those clocks. So for example, nvtool-i0 is going to affect the overclock specifically for GPU 0. And then you would follow that up with the and and nvtool-i1 to set the overclocks for GPU number 2 and so on. And as you can see, each one of these are slightly different than the next. However, if all of your GPUs are the same, then you can simply use one command. So in this example, I'm currently running everything at a core offset of 265, memory locked at 5001, and the core clock locked at 515. Now I have found that these are pretty efficient all the way across the board on all the 30 series GPUs, but if you really want to dial it in, uh, then refer back to the differences here, which I will leave in the description for you below. So getting back to the rig here, you notice that I have uh, lots of different NVTool commands that I've tried. It seems like if you get over roughly about 325, you may run into some stability issues with some of your GPUs, not all of them. Uh, this 3070 Ti rig seemed to run pretty stable for the past few days using 325 core offset. However, I moved this rig just the other day, and after moving it, uh, it, it seemed to crash after a couple of hours, so I've dropped it back down to 265. Now, something that I need to explain to you as you go up and down uh, in these offset settings is keep in mind the higher number that you put on your core offset while you're using a locked core clock that's typically going to keep the hash rate pretty close to where it's at but it's going to drop the power usage now the higher you go with your core clock locked the more power you're going to use and you will probably increase in hash rate so you want to play around with both of those. However, you probably want to leave the memory locked at 5001. Uh, so far, that seems to be the most efficient settings that I've found. So getting back to uh, some of the other rigs here, let's go ahead and take a look at efficiency on some of these. So this AMD rig, 
Uh, it's currently set at 1800 on the core, 875 on the mem. And I leave my VDD, VDDCI, and V, excuse me, MVDD pretty high in comparison to some of the things that I've seen from others. A uh, good example would be Kiwi Crypto Miner. He does an excellent job of finding the most efficient settings that you can have. However, uh, when it comes to stability, AMD really gives me some troubles. So I like to make sure that it is rock stable. I don't want any downtime. I don't want to waste any power whatsoever if I'm not hashing. So I have found that these are pretty stable for me on Nexa. Unfortunately, these are the only AMD GPUs that I have, uh, but I will share some of those AMD overclock settings with you uh, here in the near future. Now let's go ahead and jump back over here to Tech Profits comment. He did share a uh, PDF image of what's working well for him on the 30 series. So he's got an A2000, 3060, 3060 Ti, A4000, 3070, 3070 Ti, 3080, 3080 12 gig, 3080 Ti, 3090, and a 3090 Ti. And as you can see, he has shared his locked core clock, his core offset, his locked memory settings, and the most efficient GPU, surprisingly, is a 3090 Ti coming in at 0.377. Now, I do not know if these are at the wall or if this is in software. I'm going to assume that it's in software. And just wanted to point out here that specifically on his 3070 Ti, he's sitting at an efficiency of 0.317 as opposed to what I am currently using. Uh, we're in efficiency at approximately 0.35. And some of these we get all the way up to 0.37 as well. So you just need to play around with those numbers and figure out what works best for you. But hopefully this will get you guys started. And, you know, one other thing to consider, the more efficient that you run, if we can convince everybody to be as efficient as possible, the hash rate should go down and this should increase profitability. Now, of course, you know, there are going to be those out there who have free power and are not concerned with that and just pushing the cards to the limit. Uh, however, uh, this new version of Wild Rig is way more efficient than the previous versions. Uh, pretty substantial increase across the board. I'd say at least about 10% on most of the GPUs. Anyways, that is all I have for this particular video. I appreciate you guys watching. Do me a favor, hit that like and hit the subscribe on your way out and I'll see you on the next one.